Welcome to the Hemophilia Council of California's Advocacy and Policy Webinar. This is our Virtual Legislative Day 2021 um, Virtual Advocacy Primer. So just wanted to point out a few more resources that are in your packet. Um, so we talked a lot and Randy talked a lot about, you know, really working on telling your story. And we did say that, um, you know, we've talked, we, we introduced the issues and I think someday, sometimes with legislative day, everyone gets focused on the issues and they think, I don't, you know, they get worried about whether or not they understand the issues well enough and can explain them clearly enough. And really, we want you, when you start out your meetings, we want you to introduce yourselves and we want you to tell a little bit about your story. Um, because the most compelling thing you can do is to personalize what it means to live with a bleeding disorder, to live with a family member that has a bleeding disorder. So when you introduce yourself, share your story and how you are connected to the bleeding disorders community. So in your packet, both in again, both hard copy that we mailed you and electronically, we gave you tips for telling your story. We also had a two part webinar series last month about telling your story and you can still go on and access that. If you missed that webinar and you think, oh, I really want some tips on telling my story, you can go watch those webinars tonight or tomorrow um, before those meetings and, and learn some, some of these tips. But the nine tips on that page really are a summary of what we talked about in those web webinars. Um, and then we also have some tips for virtual advocacy. So every year we kind of go over our tips for, you know, what do you do when you're in the legislator's office? Um, so we've adapted them. These are tips for the virtual advocacy world, um, but they're similar, right? So go over, make a plan for your meeting ahead of time. Um, this is where I'm going to make my plug. We are still finalizing. I know some of the teams um, not everyone has responded about what time they're available to meet tomorrow. So we're still trying to get all of those finalized, but make try to make that a priority to meet with your team tomorrow so that you can go over your plan and you know who's going to share which issue and who's going to share their story in which member's office. Um, you only have 15 to 20 minutes, so you just need to be smart about kind of working through your plan of who's going to go in what order. And um, that way you can be very smooth in going through your story and then touching on the issues at the end. Um, you want to try to log into all of your meetings a couple of minutes early, um, just like you would always want to show up at the member's office a little early. Their schedules are very, very tight. So you want to be there and be ready to go as soon as they hop on and try to not keep them waiting. Um, on the other hand, don't be offended if they are running a few minutes late. Um, you know, that does happen. Their schedules are packed and sometimes they might run a little late. If it goes about five minutes after your appointed time, then your group leader will try to contact the office and find out what's happened. And um you know, last year, this went really smoothly. We didn't have too many late meetings. We didn't really have too many issues with no shows. But if that does per chance happen on Wednesday, one tip is, you know, meet with meeting on Zoom. You could record your meet. You could record your, your group telling their story, and we could send that to the legislative office. And that's a way you could kind of virtually have the meeting with the office, um, even if for some reason at the last minute they get conflicted out and can't show up. Um, you're going to go over this in your teams um, and your group leaders are going to kind of help coordinate this, but we suggest that you quickly introduce everyone who's there. Um, that would be like your name. Um, what is your connection with bleeding disorders? Like I have hemophilia B or my dad has hemophilia or my brother or my sister um, and the hometown, like what town you're from. Um, you want to focus on having the folks that are the actual constituents of the member that office that you're meeting with really shine and take center stage in those particular meetings. And then the other group members can back them up in that meeting. Um, you know, we talk about using persuasion and not confrontation. 
Um, I don't think any of these issues that we're presenting on are particularly controversial. So I don't think you're gonna get a lot of negative feedback. Um, some may have, you know, some may share some of say the insurance industry's concerns about the bill, for example, but you don't need to be controversial. Just share your story about why it's important to you. Um, and as always, if you are get a question from someone and you are not sure of the answer, never make up an answer. Do not feel pressured to be an expert on one of these issues. Um, you can always just say, you know, that's a great question. I'm not sure of the answer. Let me write down your question and I will make sure someone, I will get back to you with the answer. I will make sure someone gets back to you with the answer. Um, as Randy said, it's actually can be a really good thing um, to have a question when you leave that meeting because that's a good kind of excuse then to follow up with the office and later and say, hey, thank you for meeting with us. You had a question about this, here's the answer. And so then after the meeting, you can connect with myself um, or we'll loop in Terry, our lobbyist, and we can make sure that we figure out the correct answer to that question and get back to that office. Um, and then we will also, with your groups, coordinate to make sure that you um, send, we send a follow-up and a thank you to those member offices as well. So does anybody have any questions for sort of virtual advocacy and how those meetings are going to work? We talked kind of about using your talking points. You can have them in front of you, especially in this virtual world. Um, you're gonna practice as teams, but you also might wanna practice. Our future leaders have been, we've been encouraging them this past week to practice daily. Um, it's a great idea to you know, practice your two minute story in front of a mirror to a, to a spouse or a child or a friend. Um, you know, we don't have to be overly formal in the Zoom world. You don't necessarily need to wear a suit or tie. Most of you, because we sent them or you already had them, you should have your red ties, right? So you can put your red tie on or a red scarf for bleeding disorders awareness. Um, but you don't necessarily have to wear a suit, you know, but just something, you know, you just want to have like a calm background and then something, um, you know, somewhat, um, you know, business casual is probably fine um, for your attire. And then, you know, you can share your introductions and quickly what you're going to be going over. Um, be respectful, but remember that your voice is important. Um, keep it clear and understandable and keep track of your time so that you don't go over. Um, and then another thing is, you know, watch for cues. Sometimes you might get rolling in your in your routine and kind of you're going from one to another. And the person that you're meeting with, they might have a question, but you may not be giving them an opportunity to ask it. So kind of keep your eyes open for that. And if they have something to ask or if a team member has something to add and um, be supportive of one another. If someone gets stuck, um, you know, see if they, you know, don't, don't talk over them, but see if they want your help. So um, next steps, and again, I will just remind you if anybody has questions as we're talking this through, we're just about to wrap up. So now is definitely the time to throw your questions in the chat or raise your hand. Um, tomorrow you will be practicing with your teams. Um, at a time that will be individualized to those teams. So we will let you know that. Please watch your email and respond if your team leader is um, reaching out about your availability. Um, Wednesday, you have Zoom meetings with the legislature. Um, everyone should have received calendar invites as well as an email with all of their times and Zoom links. We will be following up with a thank you. And then you can send an email or use social media to say thank you afterwards and to reinforce your ask. Um, we're sending out 
Um, and I think Andrea is gonna put them in the chat right now. We also have two phone to action links, which all of you guys can feel free to use now. They're in the chat and we will be sending out this information in an e-blast tomorrow as well. Um, phone to action is a platform that will allow you to send an email and or a tweet to your elected official. And once you put in your contact information with your address, it will automatically connect you with your correct assembly member and senator to send that email. And if you have a Twitter account, that tweet too. Um, and it has already a suggested email that you can edit if you would like to personalize it, as well as a, a suggested tweet that you can also personalize. So those are a great way to quickly and easily make your voice heard. And everyone can use those links to, um, to make their voices heard on both the budget issues and on AB 752, regardless of whether they're scheduled to participate in meetings on Wednesday or not. Okay, so um, any other questions? That was, I felt like I have to, had to kind of run through a lot of that information quickly at the end. But um, hopefully everyone feel, is feeling confident about all of that information. Um, I want to thank um, our sponsors of Future Leaders and Legislative Day, um, Takeda Biomarin, HF Healthcare, Santa Fe Genzyme, the National Hemophilia Foundation, Every Life Foundation, and Solio Health, as well as our Public Policy and Advocacy Webinar Series sponsors, Takeda, Biomarin, HF Healthcare, and Santa Fe Genzyme. They've all helped make this possible today. So thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.